fire ignites passion and creativity. Free your imagination with the slim, sleek and beautiful new Huawei P8. We're in Pretoria East and we are at a game farm where we're here to find out about a new piece of technology that aims to alert farmers or property owners as soon as a fence is broken with or tampered with. And this is the problem with these vast areas. When somebody comes into your property and they're poaching animals like we've heard about these rhinos that are being slaughtered, you don't know when people are onto your property. And that's why this unique piece of technology called Draat Sitter is a very clever piece of technology that's been invented by a South African and patented worldwide that aims to give people that own these massive properties like mines and game farms etc an early warning when somebody does break into your property but right now i need to speak to mariska who is going to be chatting to us in just a second um she's a bit scared but uh hello <whistles> mariska mariska how would you describe this to somebody that you meet for the first time what exactly does draad sitter do um, it uses the sound on the fence uh, in a proprietary way by cancelling out all the ambient noise um, and you're just left with the noise on the fence so you can make it very sensitive and then it detects any sound on the fence and it uh, um, sends out a, uh, a signal to all of its neighbours and with that you can will be able to determine plus minus 50 meters on a on a fence of where an intrusion or tampering is taking place. So essentially this is used to protect any kind of fence. It can be an electric fence, it can be, uh, uh, you know, you've got these massive properties around the world. I'm thinking of mines, I'm thinking of game farms. So you'd put this product, how, how, how often along the line do you have to put this product? Yeah, it, um, it works on some fences better than others. Uh, normal taut wire fences are very good. Electric fences are very good. The best fences are fences like uh, with wooden wiring posts and wooden droppers. Mesh fences and bonox fences are not so effective and normally you place them on every wiring post. So normally they place wiring posts about 100 meters apart, sometimes 200 meters and each of them is placed on one of those wiring posts. Okay, and, and inside it, it looks something like this over here. So there's two batteries. I mean, how long would something like this last? Do you have to recharge it or every so often? or Because it's sitting in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? Yeah, well, at this stage, um, uh, conservatively, we designed it for longer than two years of lifetime. Um, so it's just normal AA batteries. In the future, we will. it is designed for uh, solar, small solar panels, but to keep the system um, simple, you know, uh, to just to prove the concept, we decided to go the simple route and, uh, route and use two AA batteries. Now, the system can consist of up to 9,099 units of these. So, of these. so you can cover a thousand kilometers of fence at the end, and they all form part of a very low power mesh network, so they all talk to each other. And the message is actually relayed to the base unit. And then you've got a base unit, this is just a, a demo version of it. Um, and it tells you the address of the unit, of where it took place. So if I, if I like tap on this pole, will something come up here? Yes. Alright, let's try it out. Wow, literally, literally in, in, it took a few seconds and it says number two. So, so now, how does this translate into telling you where, uh, so you, you see this on a map basically? Yeah, at this stage, to keep this simple, you know, just to prove the concept, we decided to go the address uh, route. In the future, we're aiming for you program the unit with Bluetooth with using your cell phone. And it, um, in that time, your cell phone stores the GPS coordinates of the unit. And with it, you'll um, have all the GPS coordinates of all the units. So in the future, if you get an alarm, it tells you this is the unit, this is the alarm, and it opens a map with a mark of where the incident took place. And then you just press a button on your cell phone to take you there and it uses the GPS of your cell phone to take you to the position. I mean, this is quite extraordinary technology and I know that you've patented this in you know, many countries around the world. This has hadn't been developed by anybody. H how did you come up with the idea? Why did you want to decide, when did you decide to do something like this and did you just wake up one day and say, hmm, that's a good idea. I mean, what is your background? I'm an electronic engineer and uh, one of my colleagues had a lot of problems with cattle theft and uh, uh, there's a lot of cruelty involved with that and he asked me to kind of help them with ideas and we started with a much more complex system and it was literally just one morning I had the idea uh, 
you know, why don't you use a sound on a fence? Because a taut wire is a very good conductor of sound. And uh, I built a small prototype just with one sensor and my, we took it to work and my colleagues told me now I'm going to get a lot of false alarms. And I went home again and I did, the idea just came to me, why don't you do a differential measurement? So we've got two sensors in a unit. One measures all the ambient sound and the other one measures the ambient sound and the sound of the fence and you measure the difference between that so you cancel out all the ambient sound. And I built a small prototype, took it into work and when I showed that to my colleagues they said no I must patent this thing and that's why uh, where the whole story began actually. And, and how much does a unit like this cost? Uh, what would it cost to kind of do your average farm or uh, a small game reserve? Well, um, yeah, it's a 6,600 rands per unit. If you compare it, say you've got a 10 kilometer of electric fence, uh, a 10 kilometer electric fence would cost you something like 1,2 million rand if you use all the labor and all the material that goes into it. If you uh, use a, a, a fiber optic system, that will cost you 2 million rands for that 10 kilometers. And it depends now how far your wiring posts is apart. Say they are 100 meters apart with this system, it will only cost you something like 660,000 rands. And if they are 200 meters apart, it's only 330,000 rands. So at the end, it's a, a very cost effective uh, system and you've got all the functionality of an optical fiber system. So it's a very, it makes it affordable for people to protect long fences. We are still busy with the qualification of the unit and one of the big rhino farms. So we'll probably only start releasing it uh, beginning to middle of next year. We first want to qualify it to make sure it works perfectly. So Veynant, this Drahtsitter is a fascinating piece of technology and I see it's been patented around the world, but how difficult is it to patent an idea? Because how do you know that something like this hasn't been already thought of? Well, okay, it's actually quite simple. Basically, you know, there needs to be something new about the idea. So that's the first thing. If you believe that you have a patentable idea, we need to establish, is it really something that's new? Um, so, you know, there can sometimes be many products that address the same problem, but they all do it differently. And if there's something unique about your product and you feel that it has commercial potential, then you definitely need to consider whether you can get patent protection for it. Well, initially you can start just with a local application. And what's nice about our law is it gives you a 12-month period in which you can decide whether it's worthwhile to pursue patent protection abroad. So you can say start with a provisional, we call it a provisional patent application. And that will reserve your right to file further patent applications for 12 months. The biggest difficulty we encounter is people make their ideas publicly available before they have apply for patent protection and the law says once it's out, out in the public domain you can't you can no longer apply for patent protection the most important thing is to first speak to an attorney so that you can first get your your rights um, in an application before you actually make it publicly available well, i must say getting the feel of being a game ranger but just getting the feel of this product, this draft of the product, it's really had me thinking quite a bit of how unique this product is. And this is why it's getting me so excited and the fact that this is the ability to become the next creepy crawly export out of this country. That's the potential that this has got. And when you look at the poaching that's taking around the world and these poor animals that are being killed and slaughtered in the rhinos, if you can protect these animals, think of the difference that we can make in the world that we're living in with a product like this called Drahtsitter. My prediction, this product is going to be massive.